Hello and welcome to this video. This is Tim and we're back on the rapid road to improvement, I'm playing rapid games. And I'm facing Tarek Yavadisk and he's playing the immediate d4 Sicilian. So we'll play knight c6 here. And I think we want to play e5 here and we'll pre-move the b takes. Okay, that's fine. And we have bishop c4, and um, we could play d5, but then we're going to lose our pawn on d5. So d5, e takes, c takes, bishop takes. Bishop b7 will prepare d5, but so will knight f6, and that's getting development on the king side. Bishop g5, I wouldn't be surprised to see here. Well, we see knight c3. Let's play bishop b7. Well, the other option is bishop b4 to pin the knight that's doing the work on d5. So bishop b4, bishop d2. And I think those are the two options here. I'm going to go with bishop e7. All right, we'll get castled, I think. Yeah, let's go ahead and get castled now. Bishop g5, we might expect to see. Yeah, let's kick that away right now. And obviously trade, trade, if necessary. Okay, we have bishop g5. So options now, something like bishop queen b6 to hit the b pawn. <clears throat> d5, e takes, c takes. And then if knight takes, knight takes. Yeah, that's not working yet, but bishop b7, I think, has a threat of d5. Uh, it's possible we need to play bishop d6 first. What I'm worried about, <clears throat> if we play bishop b7, I'm worried about takes, takes, and then in queen d6 in. So we might need to do this a bit more slowly. So let's play d6 now <clears throat> to get rid of that threat of exchanging on f6. And then we'll look to play something like rook b8, bishop b7, then play d5. Um, f4 may be a plan for white. We would then have queen b6 check and taking on b2. Yeah, see, I my gut is that this won't be good because we're hitting, after we take on b2, we're hitting the knight c3. So queen b6 check, king h1. Queen takes b2, hits knight. Let's play queen d2, protecting the knight. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's going to be enough for white in that line, so we'll see. We'll see about that. Obviously, you can play bishop f2, but I don't think, I don't think that's something white wants. So queen takes b2, queen d2, queen b4 hits the bishop. Okay, I'm going to go with that now. Um, is there any other moves? You could play something like knight a4. We have queen b4, four king, the two pieces. Um, bishop e1 is possible, but that looks wrong. I, I'm really expecting queen d2 here, and then probably queen b4. Okay, so I hadn't even considered that move, which is not good. Uh, we could take on c3 and then take on f6. So queen takes c3, pawn takes f6, bishop takes f6. Bishop, yeah, and then we would have to recapture with the g-pawn, which is not what we want. So I think we just want to play here, d takes. And we still have the threat on the c knight. If bishop takes f6, then bishop takes f6, I think is fine. We're covering the d5 square and the b5 square that the knight won't want to hop into. So I think the knight move, and if queen d2 to protect the knight, then we may have rook d8, getting a tempo on the queen. So I'm okay with my position. I'm a little bit behind on time. Um, once again, if knight a4, queen b4 looks okay. Um, if bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6. Okay, he does go for that. I mean, we just need to check that rook takes f6 doesn't work. But 
I mean, at the very least, in this situation, if rook takes f6, I could just not recapture the rook and take the knight instead. So let's first play bishop takes f6. And then if he plays rook f6, we can calculate whether we can take the rook. He, okay, so he just goes for queen d3. So I think this tempo looks like it should be good here. Um, he's going to then have to play something like queen e3. Uh, I think this is, looks like a useful tempo. Um, rook d8, rook b3. Okay, let's gain the tempo on the queen, because that may dislodge the queen. Okay, you've Im immediately gone for that. So, we can we play here? Queen takes a1. We can. You would have to... Oh, you could take and then rook takes. That's also fine. What other options do we have? We've got the immediate rook takes here, then you'd have to play knight takes. Now then, then we, we've we got a rook on d3, and we have to decide where to move it to. If we go rook here, we could go rook here, forking these two pieces, but this isn't on pre, so then bishop here would maybe trap. Or rook d2 looks decent. There's a lot of moves, so let's have a look at queen takes a1 again. Queen takes a1. Rook takes a1, rook takes d3, takes. Or queen takes a1, rook takes here, takes with check. Then you have an intermezzo check maybe with bishop f7. Queen takes a1, queen takes here, takes, then check, king moves, and then you recapture. So I think we don't want that one. So other options are queen to d4. That looks decent. That looks decent as well. Or just taking here. Taking here and gaining a tempo on the d2 pawn. The only thing, I, the thing I'm worried about is rook takes d3, knight takes, hits my rook. I play rook d2 and then you play bishop here and you kind of lock my rook in. But I think... I'm going to have enough play with, yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to go for here then. Lots of moves there, and that, I think that's the spot where, so the only other option here was this move here, but we felt like just bishop b3, and then you've got everything covered. Um, the other option is rook e3, hits that rook, and then bishop d3 yeah I think we want this though rook on the second rank we have the d8 square covered if rook to d1 so the main issue now is how much time I've spent to get to that point okay that's what we thought you might play so I'm gonna play I'm, I'm kind of thinking about this move here well I've played it very quickly suddenly now you actually might have knight c4 here which could be a problem for me. Yeah, it looks like a big problem, actually. Uh, knight c4. Yeah, you played it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have got this move, and then, but then we're losing, definitely losing a piece in that variation. The alternative is takes here, and then bishop here. That's, that's something that might work. We might be able to get a pawn for exchange. I don't think we can... I mean, bishop g5 you take, I don't think that works. I have messed this up, definitely. Um, so I might need to play this and then this and fork this. Okay, let's do that then because at least we get a little bit of material. We get a pawn for our exchange there. Or at least it appears to me we do. Um, what's... You may be playing rook f5 here, hit to e-pawn, takes, takes, or maybe not takes, and I maybe get the e-pawn as well. And then I'm protecting the c6 pawn. So this isn't great, but let's see. It's a little bit of compensation. It's not much, but it's a little bit. Let's have a little sip of tea. Yeah, 
that was a crucial moment there um, where you spend a long time thinking about a specific move and then the following moves are played very quickly. You, know, you use all your concentration up on that one move and then you sort of take your eye off the ball and then you play a series of moves quickly and get into trouble. So I spent a long time thinking about what to do after knight a4 and then I played rook um, d2 almost immediately you know, after 5-10 seconds and now I have a problem. Okay, so I don't think there's much else other than taking this, so let's do that. You're now going to move the knight, uh, maybe knight a5, to hit the c pawn. Uh, and I think I've got an issue that b... Okay, you just come back with that. That doesn't look like the most ambitious move. So I'm okay with that. Um, rook b1, rook b1 looks good. Because you can't you can't stop my rook being active there with rook b1 because they've got the b1 square, but so where's that knight coming to? We've we've also got bishop e7, bishop b4 is an idea, bishop g5 is an idea, but then knight f3 to hit that. But my general, let's say the general plan would be to come in on the b2 square, and then I think if I get rook to b2, nothing else changes. I may have close to enough compensation, so he may not be able to stop rook b2. So I think he should be playing for some other threats. Maybe just rook c1 here to hit the c6 pawn. Rook b2 will come with tempo. Um, and then I maybe get this pawn if the knight moves. So you'd probably have to play. Yeah, okay, this is this is something. This is definitely some compensation. Can't stop rook b2. So ah, you can actually you just play knight b3 here. I don't like that move though. I don't like that move for white. I think we get some tempo here. So let's come in here. We've got a rook here now, rook on the second. Knight b3 is possible, but it loses a piece. So I think knight f3 is pretty much forced here. You could play knight f1, I guess. Knight f1 is possible. Then we want to get this bishop active, definitely. Bishop g5 looks good because it will control the c1 square, but now I can't play that. Um, I could play rook b4 to hit the a pawn and the e pawn. How would you protect that pawn again, would you? You maybe just leave it and go. Rook c1 doesn't help though. Okay, that's definitely an idea. How, how else can you protect? You can come back knight d2 and we maybe get a draw. Is there any other way to protect that pawn? I don't think so. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that try and pressure this. Rook c1, we've got bishop takes c4, hit, protecting the c6 square. If the rook moves here, we get, this is on prees. So the only way I can see to protect this pawn is to go knight d2. So let's offer a draw with repetition since clearly I'm worse. And we'll go from there. If he takes the draw, then obviously that's good for me and my position's worse. Met, I blundered, so obviously I'm happy with the draw here. Man, I don't know how much worse I'm. Okay, so he's not going for the draw. We are going to have to play this move here because it protects the C pawn. This is our plan here. Now we've got knight d2 now, but I have bishop d5 then. If knight d2, bishop d5. If the knight moves, the g2 pawn is under attack as well. So it may be that if we can get once again, if we get, let's say, rook b2 in, then the g2 pawn is going to be hanging. So what else could you do? I don't think there's anything else that we can do here. We don't have to move. We only have to move this bishop if knight d2. If knight d2, I may have bishop g5 also. Now, I'm not threatening bishop takes f3, I don't think, although it's not brilliant. Um, but I think I'm threatening rook b2. Okay, he just gets behind that pawn. Okay, so I, I feel like, okay, rook b2 is no good because just rook takes. If I move the bishop, we lose the c5 pawn. So let's see, what can we do? Can we push the c6 pawn? Does that achieve anything? It does, it does, a little bit. What else have we got? 
What else have we got? Um, bishop e7, knight takes e5. Yeah, okay. I think let's stop the movement of this a pawn. Okay, you've gone in there. Now, that means this bishop's no longer on pre's. So now we could try this rook b2 idea. Rook b2, we haven't got that much time. Rook b2, let's get on with this now. Let's play rook b2, getting on the second. Okay, that doesn't achieve anything, but we could gain a tempo by a bishop rook here. What would that do? That would allow the e, e pawn advance. E pawn advance. Okay, I think we're getting a little somewhere now. So let's do this. Hitting the rook. We've got. Okay, you come here for the a5 pawn. So we're going to have to gamble a bit here because the question is whether we have an, enough of an attack on the. Um, on the on the g2 square here this is what we're banking on here but the only problem with this is we have actually allowed rook a5 with tempo yeah he's gone for it but we get the check on g2 so how much is that worth i'm gonna go for it because we're running out of time we've got we've got a check on this square here which looks interesting you can't take this Ah, this is bad. I think this is over. I think this is a, yeah, I think I've lucked out here. So you've got to play rook f2 and then we take that with check. Yeah. Um, that's not mate, but you'll have to take the g2 pawn. Is there anything else I can do? I can play rook takes here. Hitting this rook. The rook moves and then I have a check. Well, let's go with that one. That maybe is wrong, but... I think you have to move this rook, and then we have rook check. Maybe we have a rook check here. Yeah, that should work too. I think we have enough time to convert this. So rook moves. Rook here. Ah, if you go rook here, we have rook here check. Yeah, rook here, rook here. Check, bishop, take the rook. Oh, it's actually mate. Okay, that was nice. That was nice. Let's just pause the video for a moment. So I just um, brought the position back to the point where white had played queen d3. We'd won this pawn on b2, and this is when we went into the long thing for about three minutes, three or four minutes, and then suddenly played it a couple of moves. So I think the first thing is to just try and think about this position a little bit more and, and what's happening. So we have an open air file, which is a slight issue for me. Um, there are some rook sacrifices, and our queen is a little bit out of play. And queen d3 look good. Uh, protects the knight, protects the bishop. So my choice here, well, I played rook d8 here in this position, I believe. And I think that's okay. It appears to win a tempo, but then he had this in-between move, knight a4. And I, I don't think this is great. Does queen b4... Okay, queen b4 would, would seem like it achieves a lot because the queen is hit... And the knight is hit. So queen b4, queen b3 would be a reasonable answer to that. We could exchange queens. I don't know if there's any other way of protecting your knight. And then we, after the exchange of queens, black's just better because he has an extra pawn. So I think queen b4 here would be a simple way of continuing. What I went for was queen takes a1, uh, rook takes d3. Let's just look at queen takes a1 briefly. You could, what I what I saw was queen takes here, check, king takes, bishop takes f7, check, king f8 though in this line. Now you've got to play rook takes a1, otherwise your material down, and then we have king takes f7. So I think this intimate so we worried about doesn't work. So queen takes a1, queen takes d8, check, bishop takes, rook takes here. Uh, I think we're a pawn up, but I think that white is more active there and, and that that isn't amazing. Maybe half a pawn better for black or something, but not amazing. What else? Queen d4 looked good. Just getting a queen right in the center. 
Um, it doesn't threaten anything, but it does hold things together. So I think I like queen d4 better than the move I played, which was rook d3. I think even rook d3 is fine. But I think at this point here, I needed to find a good move because I played rook d2 and then bishop d3. And now I need to notice there's this threat of knight c4, which just wins. So I think I went for bishop g4 here, but maybe I'm, maybe it's already too late here. Um, maybe this is rook d2. I don't see an obvious... Okay, I can't play bishop a6 to cover the c4 square. There's no other way of protecting that. I can't attack the c2 pawn so that I can capture that. Uh, I've got no rook exchanges. So I think I'm already bad here. So what would have been better then, instead of playing rook d2 here... I'm here, um, yeah, okay. So I, my choice would be rook d4, that's okay, then I'm I'm not trapped if bishop d3, which is an obvious move. Um, you probably do want to play bishop d3 because otherwise this is a bit precarious and your knight's out of play. So rook d4 looks good, rook d8 is probably fine as well, once again, still a pawn up in that, in that situation. Rook d8, you've got rook d1, then I can move my bishop out to g4 and I'm protecting the d8 square. So I think that would have been good. We'll just pause once again and then put on the analysis and just see where, see if that uh, thinking that I've just explained there is reasonable, is rational. All right, so I've switched on the engine on now. And first point was, this is the point where I played rook d8. Uh, the, the computer's like in queen b4 and i am um, got a clear advantage for black. Rook d8 is not one of the better moves. So moving the queen somewhere down the b-file seems to be best to getting getting the queen out of this slightly awkward position. Rook d8, which is my move, gives away quite a bit of advantage because let's see what's going on here. It misses the tactic bishop takes f7 check, which my opponent didn't find. What's the idea of the time bishop takes f7? If king takes f7... Um, if king takes f7, well, let's think. Bishop takes f7, king takes f7. It may be that queen takes queen c4 check gets off the d-line and then maybe rook b1 is a problem. Let's just have a look at that. So let's first look what happens if we take. Wow, okay. So, ah, this is wonderful. Okay, so the bishop is pinned to the rook and then we can just win a rook on d8. Uh, or at least it's an exchange sack because well, we'll take on c3. Um, let's just have a look at that because I'm just looking at queen. I was thinking in this position you could play queen a1 and then if rook takes then the, then, then the bishop is unpinned. But if we played queen takes a1 here we would have an intermezzo check with the queen to get off that attack. And then we take go ahead and take the queen. So that's why that doesn't work. So that bishop f7 was the reason for not playing rook d8. My opponent plays knight a4, which is apparently really bad. And actually, the move played by me is what the computer likes best here. Queen a1, it's giving as second best move. Uh, let's just have a look at that move. And, okay, there's not much difference here between the evaluations of rook takes a1 and rook takes queen, queen takes d8. I thought here that... This would be okay. I thought my position would be a bit passive here, but I've got the two bishops and I, it's it's me on move. I can play rook b8 to gain the b-file and it thinks black's clearly better there. So, but my move played was good. Now it takes b2, obviously it's forced. And then here, this is the point we looked at where I need to be playing either rook d3 or rook c3. I didn't, sorry, rook, uh, rook d4. I did consider rook c3 which it's fine with but rook d4 which is the move we looked at just now and said that looks solid again it's hitting the bishop so it's tying white down much better obviously the move i played um now what's interesting is here is that apparently black is still better whereas i felt this this was a blunder so bishop d3 Ah, my goodness me, I'm, I'm I'm going mad here. Bishop e6 is possible. I was looking at bishop a6 to try and stop knight c4, but bishop e6 is simple, um, and black is still fine. But there's I put myself in a situation where there's only one move to keep the advantage. 
whereas the previous ones and all other moves is include, include, including the move I played, give up the advantage. So that's why rook d2 is bad here. Okay, I don't think there's much point reviewing the rest of the game. It's a bit of a tactical melee. Um, but one thing I do think is interesting, I've just, again, moved forward a few moves. This was the position where I had... Um, Yeah, I'd given up my rook for the for the for the bishop. We had pawn takes here. I've got this fork here, and white is only very slightly better here. So this picking up the pawn and the two bishops is is pretty useful. It seems like rook c1 here would have been good, and then I'm not gaining a tempo on the knight when I take the d pawn. So that's the, the move to keep the advantage for white. With this move here. Uh, that tempo on the map, and it's it's already saying the, the position is equal here actually, and then now black is better again. Knight b2 would have been better hitting the bishop. After knight b d2, black is better now, quite a lot better. This c pawn is pushing forward and then getting to c5 and protecting the bishop. Um, my move is not as good, but still a little bit better. So I, what's interesting is that I mis-evaluated the position after the blunder, just because of the blunder, I assumed I must be worse rather than being objective about the evaluation. Um, and this move was quite bad as we suspected. I think it, it's giving away too many squares on the second and third rank and um, rook b2 was good. There was the best move in the position, hits the knight, knight f3, rook b c5 was the best move here. Rook b4 was my move. No, rook b4 was the best move, so we hit that pawn. And then we had the repetition, and it looks like white should have taken the draw, um, but went for more, which is understandable. Again, probably evaluating the position based on the blunder rather than the, the merits of the position. Rook c1 hit the rook. Black's a lot better here. He took that pawn and protected the c pawn. And, and I mean, black's winning now, apparently, after rook a1, going back to protect the a pawn. He had to play something like a5 keeping the activity of this rook on the semi-open file. And um, yeah, bishop d5 was good here. What did I play? a5, I've still got a big advantage. And uh, yeah, this move is virtually losing here. So let's just have a look. Uh, bishop c2 to, to fork the, the d1 rook and the a4 pawn. And then black suddenly got three passed pawns and uh, yeah, just too far ahead there. Rook b2 still winning. And um, yeah, okay, I think I'll stop reviewing there, but thank you for watching. And we'll have another rapid game in due course.